It's only 7 a.m. And we've already got problems. This is going to be a great day. So I was sitting there packing my lunch and Hector calls, Hey, I just got a flat tire on the baler and I, I can't drive it. It's that bad. Okay, is it an accumulator tire? I'll bring in a tire and a jack. Hey, there goes Trevor getting pellets already. Damn. He was still hauling silage like 9.30 last night for another crew after we shut down. He lives over half an hour that way. So he's already made it all the way over to the hay mill, got loaded, and headed home. I don't know if that guy sleeps. Anyways, Hector. Um, he's got a flat tire on the baler, and of course, we're on the other side of the river, clear out by the airport. So now Harley and I are headed to go pick him up. As you can tell, Harley is real excited. Um, we're going to go pick him up, bring him back out here to get the other baler. Because <coughs> we had only taken one baler to town because it was going to be a field a day type thing. <laughs> so now we got to have both balers in. And we got to wait till 7.30 to call the tire shop to have them go fix them. But i got to get there first and see what size tire it is because I don't know it off the top of my head. I think I got distracted in the middle of my flat tire part, though, now that I think about it. It wasn't an accumulator tire. That'd be too easy. It's a tractor tire. That's why I gotta go pick him up. Man, stupid Trevor getting me distracted. Squirrel? Only 45 minutes late, but the convoy is on the move. Uh, I got Colton back behind me uh, about a half a mile. Got a 20-mile drive to the first field, and it's already quarter till nine. I was hoping to be there by now. But with the whole tire deal, and then taking Hector through the drive through McDonald's with the fuel trailer, they were moving slower than molasses this morning. Oh, luckily Colton had the chopper down here ready to go by the time I got there, so thanks to Colton for that. Either way, we're on the move. And we're going, if I didn't say this earlier, we're going to the hemp farm, so... They've grown a lot of corn lately, so I don't know if we're going to have any hemp to chop like a couple years ago. Which is a good thing, because God, that gave me a headache by the end of the day smelling that stuff. Alright, let's go get this over with. Huh? Well, that's something you don't see every day. Chopper crew passing chopper crew. Huh. Only half an hour later than I wanted to start, but we're going. Be right one, Colton. And there is hemp out in this field, so I'll show you that. Okay, you see the really tall green weeds? Yes, there's a lot of pigweed out here because they do hemp. They can't use pesticides. Them taller ones, that ain't pigweed. All I know is the longer this goes, the more I want a pizza. Colton, you want a pizza? I want a pizza. I'm getting hungry. Whew, that's strong. We need like smell of it so you guys can smell. The aromas. Um, anywho, we got a little over a hundred acres to do here, and then I don't know where we'll go. And before you say it, let's get to the and before you say it, no, I did not plug the machine. Damn near plugged the machine. Hit the header shut off just in time. So then I waited for her to back up. It happens. You hit random green spots that you are expecting and it suddenly pulls the engine down and you just can't react fast enough. Unfortunately, these newer machines, they don't have the uh, turbo pull the way the old machines did. We get the 7000s. If you pull that engine down, you just slow down slightly and that turbo would eventually pull that engine back up. These newer ones, they just, they don't have that. I don't know if it's torque or what do you want to call because I'm not a mechanic, so I don't know shit about engines. But they just don't pull back up the way the older machines did. So, yeah, now we got that squared away. Back to chop and chop. Okay. Finally done with the hip part, but I've got a massive headache. It is quarter after three. Now we're moving 10 miles back closer to home. 
to start on what could possibly be the biggest field we've ever chopped. It is damn near a full section pivot. I have no idea how many acres are in this thing. I have no idea what it's like. I've never cut it before. Either way, it's going to be an adventure. Good or bad, it's going to be an adventure. I was wrong. It is not a full section. It's just damn near. I'm just I'm just gonna go with that. The, the pivot's over there. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm just gonna go around it and head into space apparently. Maybe, maybe if I just don't touch the steering wheel, I'll go straight. This is weird. I don't know if you can see through the dust kind of right there beside LB. You can see the grain elevator at the feedlot. The, the pit though is kind of hidden back over that way, not right by the elevator. I'm gonna say it's four miles to the pit, four miles back. We've got 11 semis here, and they can't keep up. And this isn't record yields. I mean, this is 10 ton stuff. But because we can run about 10 mile an hour in 10 ton stuff, they can't quite keep up so good. I don't know. You gotta find little things to make you laugh, right? To me, that's hilarious that that many semis, that close, Well, if my acre meter's right, it says it did 45 acres there. And Colton would have done roughly the same, so 90 acres. Well, might be pretty close to accurate. Either way, it is quarter till six. Colton is just putting the finishing touches on the last load. I'm headed to the shop. I'm freaking dumb tired. <laughs> Either way, let's go clean this off. Either way, let's go clean this off. But that, I don't, I don't know. I'm just. Hmm. Pinchy, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Anyways, guys, everything's blown off. Colton just headed out there to blow off his machine. Grab all my crap and. Head home. Go see what the construction guys did to the yard. That's a long story. Either way, <sighs> right for now. Talk to you guys later.